What's going on everyone? Slow Boss here. Wanted to bring you a new control deck that I've been using on the ranked ladder for this season. Uh, it's December 4th today. Um, I've been climbing from silver through gold. I usually stop around platinum just because that's when you start to go one for one on wins and it's just a little too try hardy for, for me as a casual. So that's usually where I stop, but this has gotten me there in uh, last month's ladder and it's climbing right now very well. Um, so yeah, I'm calling this LCI Control. This is the second version. This is kind of an active moving list just because I'm trying to tweak it to the best I can. So you'll see some weird numbers of things in here and I'm just kind of testing out some stuff. But uh, basically I got everything piled up into, I guess, what I call their purpose. Um, so in this first column here, we got the disruption package, which is two duress just for grabbing planeswalkers or enchantments or artifacts because it's the only way black can really address that kind of thing. Then we have three deep cavern bats. This acts as a evasive creature with a little bit of lifelink. It also removes components of combos or uh, disrupts the, the curve of an opponent kind of thing or causes a two for one on removal uh, on a non-valuable creature. So. This is really good against a lot of decks. It's definitely one of the, the cards that's been overperforming. If you're not sure what this card looks like, it looks like that. Definitely love this guy. It's kind of the uh, better kite sail freebooter, if you will. Um, then in the same disruption package, we got Liliana. She's good for discarding and just kind of cl climbing towards her ultimate, which has to be addressed. And then also is a great way to remove very pesky ward creatures or big creatures that kind of outgrow some of the smaller removal that we have in the deck, like Virtue Persistence or Cut Down. She can answer those threats. Um, speaking of removal, this is the removal package here. Um, we got three Cut Downs for the aggro matchups, three Go for the Throats for the aggro matchups, two uh, Children's Edict for the Planeswalkers and or ward creature matchups. Uh, we have two Gixis Command for the Go Ride strategies and the tokens and things of that nature, and or <clears throat> recursion of our own creatures and or life gain if needed, and then Virtue of Persistence is removal with life gain at sorcery speed, which is unfortunate, but it'd be way too good if it were instant speed. And then late game, this becomes one of our win cons, so which I'll move it over here now. Uh, in this column, we got uh, Collector's Vault. This is just a really good way to filter and ramp uh, if you're in a matchup that does not really need to be duressed or cut downs don't make any sense or you're just flooding like crazy. It's so nice to just leave open some mana and have a couple of instant speed removals or answers for opponent's threats while leaving open the Collector's Vault because you can easily draw a card, choose what's best to discard, discard the worst card for the matchup, gain a token, get a fresh card in your hand, and then it's your turn, and then you have another draw, and you can do it again and again and again. And basically, this will help you filter out your hand. Iron Craig is uh, basically just a two-mana rock, uh, just for ramping purposes. Um, we have some late-game bombs that we want to get to faster than the opponent, so that's why this is here. Uh, it can become the equipment, but I very rarely do that. But on occasion, it's awesome. And uh, maybe it will come in handy. Celestis is kind of the same concept as the Vault, uh, except it's a 3 CMC rock and produces a colored mana, which sometimes can be relevant if you need, like, a Liliana and you're just flooding out with, like, Murexes or something like that. Uh, so the Celestis, you can play the day-night cycle to the best of your ability to gain some life if you're in an aggro matchup to kind of just hang around for a little while, get rid of the cards that don't ma make sense, and uh, kind of kind of flip around your Graveyard Trespasser, which is now in the creature column. You can easily convert the Graveyard Trespasser to its 4-4 version, gain a life, make this more powerful, eat two more things out of graveyards. It's a good uh, synergy between the Celestis and the Graveyard Trespasser um, if you can get it to drop. Uh, so yeah, Graveyard Trespasser, obviously an amazing 3-drop if not the best black three drop creature uh, just because the ward discard the life gain the graveyard hate it's got it all it's just amazing uh, almost equally as amazing is the preacher of the schism one of my new favorite cards uh, this guy is a 2-4 which is a big booty death touch guy that 
shits out little tokens that have lifelink, which is great for blocking big creatures that don't have any trample or evasion, and or draws you a card every time he attacks, so he's either going to take something with him, do the do the damage against the opponent, but as soon as he turns sideways, he's either making a token or he's drawing you a card. And if you happen to tie on life, he does both, which is insane. Um, then we got one off of Alkalots, Aklazots, sorry, <laughs> Aklazots. This is the Bat God. Uh, he discards, he draws, he's flying, he's lifelink. If he dies, he turns into a land. Um, and he can recur himself back to the uh, battlefield if they don't have enough cards in the hand, which is great. So he needs to be answered with exile removal, or he's just going to go to town on people. So all around, awesome five drop. Got Shieldred in here. She's too good to pass up. We got uh, one copy of her because of the Planeswalker or non-token creature hate that she brings on entry as well as the ability to turn into the true scriptures for blowing something up, whether it be a planeswalker or a creature, making them discard and then bringing everything from every graveyard back to the battlefield is just absolutely a game ender. So if they don't have an answer for this and they do have eight cards in their graveyard, which a lot of decks right now are trying to put as many things in their graveyard as possible, you can flip this pretty easily. Um, so yeah, all around pretty useful card. Uh, then we got our card draw uh, column here. We got Soren the Mirthless. He draws you cards. If he draws mana off the top, that's great. It doesn't cost you anything, and he gains one loyalty. He gets closer to that 13-13 ultimate, which can dome opponents or planeswalkers or creatures that are problematic. He can shit out two, three lifelinkers that fly, which are awesome for evasion as well as blocking. And then he can usually end the game if he hits minus seven. Uh, then we get the Starving Revenants. This is another one of the uh, newer cards. The Revenant is very good. <laughs> I don't know how else to say that. Uh, in some matchups, it will be the worst card ever because you'll have such a hard time not drawing the two cards off the top. Um, so just be really careful. He, he, he can dome you for six to draw the two cards, but for four mana, you get two cards and a 4-4 body on the field for the cost of six life. So, uh, he's very good, and it's probably why we have a lot of uh, life-linking type things in this deck, because we want to kind of pad our stats, if you will, for aggro matchups so that we can still get the most out of the Revenant when he hits. And he does hit often. I don't know why. I only have two copies, but I see him almost every game. Uh, then our top end is Breach the Multiverse. We got two copies of this. Just bring back the highest value possible things you can that makes sense for the matchup uh, let your planeswalkers die if opponents want to attack them and you're dropping this next turn you can just get them right back full loyalty it's just absolutely bonkers usually a game ender right there and then again virtue of loyalty when it's not the removal side it is an enchantment that every turn at the very beginning you get to bring back any of your creatures or any of the opponent's creatures for free so you can bring back your starving revenant every turn and draw two cards or you can bring back the children every turn if they die that is and remove something else uh it's just insane so yep yeah, that's the deck we're running 25 lands so we got 21 swamps three mirex and one blast zone in case there's some enchantments like ossification you needed to unlock all your stuff from this is really helpful but yeah, that's the, that's the gist of it. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the gameplay of me going to town on the ladder. Peace out. Alrighty. Um, three land hand is always something I value. Uh, we have some early interaction. Having two five CMC things here is not great. So I may mulligan this. This is looking a little better. I'll probably bin the breach. Just because we're so far from it. Got some decent interaction until we set up a lily. We are on the place, so lily's really good usually. Those 
who get in my way tend to regret it. I'm tired of your secrets. I think I'm going to drop the gopher throat. Some sort of Abzan list. We'll drop Mirex next turn, that way we can start activating it. So they gotta answer Lily here soon. They may be waiting for me to lose my resources. That's an annoying ass card. Let's put a stop on their instep. Start chipping away at them. Okay, I am going to drop the Mirix, go ahead and plus Lily here, drop the other land. I've been to two lands so far, let's get in for a beat. <clears throat> it's an interesting deck they're playing. Stop on their end step. Wow. <laughs> okay. I'll be back with friends. We are flooding like a some bitch here. Stop on their instep. Mm -hmm. Step. Is that game? It's just game. Unless they do something here. Holy hell. Okay. Well, I'm glad the Mirex went the way because we were flooding so hard. That was. We had what? We had four in the opening hand, and then we drew one, two, three, four, five. Wow. Nice thing was, is that even if they address this, we still had this and a Breach the Multiverse to bring back our Lily and probably like their Spirited Companion or whatever else I would have milled, probably like a uh, shoulder it or something of that nature and just hit the board with that, but literally the mites just force an answer out of them, which is insane. So yeah, we'll take that win. All right. We got a four land opening hand. The opponent goes first. We got some removal, interaction, and some card draw. I don't hate this hand, honestly, so I may keep it. Now, if we keep drawing swamps, we're absolutely going to lose right away. <clears throat> if it's a slower deck, we might be all right. If it's a creature-based deck, we might be all right. Let's see what we got. This is the other hidden benefit of the Deep Cavern Bat. It's that it is going to let you see the opponent's hand. 
Wedding announcement gone. So now we got the tide bender. We're not gonna walk. This guy have flying, it does not. So we're gonna just go in. opponent quits because I got all the removal in the world for that deck. That probably ended a little too soon, but the game plan was to keep attacking, locking away his wedding announcement. Uh, if he flashed in this tide vendor, we would hit it with a go for the throat or a cut down. Probably a cut down unless it got buffed. We'd probably cut down this guy and then we would be able to drop the revenant next turn, draw two more cards since we have basically full health <coughs> and then from there hopefully we keep ramping and hitting some of the mana rocks things of that nature pretty solid um i think he was just not drawing what he wanted to see there but we'll take it all right this seems like a keepable hand got some removal got some end game Got some bats. This dinos. Let's get this guy out of here before he gets out of hand. Get the preacher down. Next turn, we can deep cavern bat and edict something. I think waste the turn doing that. Looks like we're double deep cavern. What's your end game, sir? Take both of his cheap shits. Have to spend his whole turn using up his removal on my dirtily little dudes. if he wants to blow it up. Nope. Yep. Heartflame Duelist does three to target. And then he, again. what, plays it? Okay. And then you have one more to finish off the Soren. Just blowing his load here. Six. See if we get stuck on six like we have been all night forever. Greatest top deck of all time. Quite possibly. Into the appraiser who then gets a three drop and then he gets another thing. This was a 
waste of time. Pretty fucking epic. All right. Your planeswalker can eat a dick. I can't wait to use him here in a second, and this guy can fuck right off. Okay, thanks. Got the mana for it too. You've got to be shitting me with this goddamn deck. Okay. Let's see. What do we got? 15 life. Going children on my side. And then we're going to go ahead and do Contorious Canned on my side. Yeah. Oh, what? You don't like it? Oh, man. All right. Definitely getting some white soldiers vibe here. So, we'll see. Me going first is a blessing. I was incorrect. Sack this guy, drop the lily, sack the next guy. Sure, let's get down that. This, fight finished before brunch. If this is a fairy's deck, the goal is to keep them off the battlefield. So we'll go land, Celestis, plus one, drop a land, and then we'll have Aklazots. Okay, never mind. We are going to go Celestis. Do they want to counter? They do not. Plus one. Drop the land. I'm tired of your secrets. Cavern bat. Did you just dump your only counter spell? Yeah, we're taking Gix here. Blocking. <laughs> I've got all kinds of connections. Dump them. I have bigger things and tell things with <laughs> off you go. See what they want to do about the Aklazots on the field. <laughs> There's no secret I can't uncover. Okay, well that means you're dropping the Soren then, since you didn't keep that. A little confused. Okay, so whenever Aklazot attacks, each opponent discards a card. Okay, so we're gonna go to Kaido. He'll have to block with the Dream Thief, still drop the Sorn, and then we have the Preacher.
learned what I needed to. And just so this isn't ticking at me, I'm gonna go ahead and put it up because if I can get it charged up to three, we could blow it, kill their gicks. by me. Killed my own preacher with the schism. I knew I'd do it. I shouldn't have done the two. I always forget that he's a two power guy. I wonder if they're going to activate Gix's ability. Nope. And they're dead. Okay. Yeah, so looking back on that, <coughs> they had the Shouldred, the Gix, and then the 1-1 one, one Flyer. I should have I should have used the Kill the Highest Creature, which would have got rid of the Shouldred, and then I probably should have used either the Return or the plus 2 one, one counters on a creature and then given it to the the Preacher. That, that was a dumb mistake of me to blow this up. I always forget that he's a two power creature and I do oftentimes think like, oh shit, I got a 3-3. Three, three. It's not a Graveyard Trespasser and I, I fucked that one up. So that was a, a blessing that they gave up there. But uh, yeah, ultimately I could have just cost myself the game because the Preacher is so much value on the drawing effects and everything. It's basically a Gix on his own. Um, but I should have I should have only killed the Shouldred and then added the plus one counters probably and just went in aggro. 
but instead I blew up my entire damn board, extra bat included. So that was uh, that was dumb. What's going on, guys? Slovosh here. Wanted to bring you a post games wrap up. Played this deck uh, today very extensively. I think I got. 12 wins on the day, capped out for the 15 on the week. Um, all of this has been on the ladder. I've gone from silver to tier 2 gold uh, on this one just today alone. Um, just kind of intermittently playing throughout the day. But uh, it's really a, a tough meta right now, and there's a lot of really try-hard uh, people playing like S-tier decks because they want to climb to Mythic as fast as possible since the ladder just reset. So... That being said, this is probably an extreme test of this deck at this time. Um, but there were some changes that I wanted to make to kind of hopefully make things a little smoother. I would like to push into some of the overperformers and remove some of the underperforming aspects of the deck. And that's what I've been trying to do with each revision. So if I were to create this deck now... Um, the changes that I would make is uh, I would probably drop down to 24 lands, keep our two mana rocks here, and uh, I would probably drop down one cut down. Uh, after turn three, this has not been performing well, and it's often a dead card. So uh, that stinks. Um, it's in there for mono red and some smaller soldier decks, but... I feel like the Deep Cavern Bat can kind of do the same thing. It's kind of dress, it's kind of removal. Uh, if they don't have a way to kill the bat, you can hold something hostage forever. And it doesn't go to the graveyard, so they can't revive it. It's just it's just an insane card. Um, really overperforming and messes with the curve and flow of the opponent's game plan. You get to see their hand on turn two if you don't already see it on turn one with dress, which I can't begin to describe how important that is at least for me to know what the correct play pattern is and to anticipate what the opponent's going to do and then play against that almost like you're playing chess so having all of their cards known to you through this card alone not to mention stealing one of them can let you play heads up and uh, do shenanigans that they can't really work around so uh, I'd go to four deep cavern bats drop the land drop a cut down, and then probably go up to three Starving Revenants. Uh, just for somewhere in the middle of our CMC range, we want to invest in something that's going to keep the card draw coming. And Soren's great. You just can only have one, and Starving Revenants can be revived with our Virtues, our Breaches, our Shouldered Ultimates, um, our Gix's Commands, things like that. It's, it's a better draw card um, as long as we have enough life to sustain it um, the descend eight will hit um, with some s scenarios where the breach is going off and that can heal you too but uh, this is just a big body um, that deserves an answer and it's a card draw and it's also filtering so if there's huge mana clumps and you don't want to take six life to get you know, two more lands when you already got seven showing or five showing or whatever, you can bin them and uh, it just works towards the descent cost. So uh, this card is just sweet all around. I really like it for a control shell, definitely. So that would be version 3.0 if I had to craft this now after playing the entire day with it. Um, my biggest regret would maybe be right here in the man mana base. Uh, this, this. 24 land shell sometimes you just get absolutely boned and sometimes it's the perfect amount so i don't know what the answer is i feel like when you play lilian in your deck you have to play 25 but i feel like maybe 24 with two mana rocks which is aka another land should be enough uh to keep going so this is where i'm going to sit for now we may make another version of this and make another video if i have any updates uh, I'll probably put this deck on Etherhub or something along those lines just for crafting. If you want to give it a shot, let me know if you have any comments or things that you've tried that work really well in it if you go that far. Uh, otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed the video overall. Mono Black is pretty much the only 
color I play or any kind of black splash decks, maybe, but daily I play mono black. And uh, this is this is where I've been enjoying it the most. And yes, I know it must be a travesty that I'm not using any Shieldreds in this deck, but I just wanted to kind of mix it up a little bit. So that's, that's where I'm at. Um, please leave comments, subscribe, thumbs up the video if you liked it, and all that good YouTube stuff. I will catch you guys next time, and I hope to hear from you. Have a good evening. Peace.